We have officially flipped over the calendar to the Olympic month, and yes, you can throw out all the hypotheticals, all the predictions. Now it's a reality. Paris 2024 is coming into focus. Uh, Morgan Campbell, wonderful to see you again. Of course, we saw the Canadian and the American Olympic trials and all the drama, so let's get into it. The marquee event, the 100 meter, all eyes on Andre de Grasse, six-time Olympic medalist. He won the race, but did he do it in a convincing way, Morgan? When you watch that race, it was uh, sort of a vintage Andre de Grasse, but not necessarily in a good way in the sense that, you know, he, he really sort of labored out of the blocks and then he hit this point midway through the race where he reeled everyone in and ran just as fast as he needed to run to win that race. Now it's 10.20, an impressive time. For a civilian, yes. For let's say an NFL player, absolutely. But for Andre DeGrasse, we know he's capable of much faster. He's run much faster this season. And the truth is, um, for a guy like DeGrasse, who has his goals, who has set you know an Olympic gold medal in the 100 meters as his goal, uh, even if we're working from his season's best, not even what he did uh, in, in Montreal over the weekend, but working from his season's best, which mm -hmm. is 10 flat, he's going to have to find another quarter of a second uh, minimum. So he, he obviously feels like he's building towards something, but he has a lot of work to do and a lot of optimizing to do over the next six weeks, one way or the other. Aaron Brown, he talked about how Andre has this uncanny ability at about 70 meters to sort of make you freeze. And actually Aaron revealed to me that he did sort of freeze when he and when he felt Andre coming. So maybe just some insights on that. Like he's savvy, he knows how to win these races. So what is happening to the people around him when they feel that Andre de Grasse heat in the closing meters? I'm not sure. And I did see that interview and Aaron said it was a rookie mistake. And it is sort of a rookie mistake because Aaron is a veteran and he's been around long enough to understand that he has to focus on his lane regardless of what Andre de Grasse is doing. And just because he feels Andre de Grasse on his shoulder or feels like at a certain point in the race, Andre should be creeping up on him. He still has to focus on what he's doing. So it's one thing to sort of be aware of the people around you. It's another thing uh, to let the people around you uh, affect what you're doing in your lane. It was really surprising but also very honest to hear that from Aaron because he is a veteran and he said it himself it was a rookie mistake. Uh, quick last thought on the 100 meters. Everybody has talked about sort of the depth and, and yes there was a bit of uh, confusion to say the least uh, in that race and who won and everything but in terms of, of the relay everybody has been talking about this relay. Andre says they can still win gold. Nobody should be concerned about these times um, but but what do you like across the field and sort of what what we saw at trials and what it means for the 4x100 uh, in Paris. Well, the 4x100, and again, so let's assume that Andre de Grasse finds two, another two tenths of a second and gets to 9.8, which would, would be a, a pretty significant personal best uh, from him. Canada is not going to win a gold medal in the 4x1 in the men's four by one based on raw speed, right? You take the four personal bests or the four, four seasons bests of these four Canadian runners, whoever they wind up being, it'll, it's probably, it, it'll probably be the same quartet that ran in, in Oregon and won the gold medal there. But if you stack up their seasons best versus the four American seasons best, the Canadian seasons best will be a lot slower. But the advantage that Canada has is that these guys have been running together for a long time and they've faced, they, they've run races where things went smoothly. They've, ra they've run races where things haven't gone smoothly. They have run races where things threatened to not go smoothly and pulled things back together. So they know how to run with each other, which is crucial in the relay because we've seen it numerous times where the United States will field a team with the four fastest runners in the field and then either not win a medal or just not get the stick around the track. And right. so that continuity is where Canada really is able to compete with the United States in the relays. So as long as Andre, Aaron, Jerome, Brendan Rodney uh, are healthy, um, they are contenders. They are contenders for a medal, for a gold medal, because they run fast enough and are good enough at the exchanges to make whatever deficit in raw speed they have uh, compared to an American quartet or a Jamaican quartet to minimize those differences.
Good stuff. My takeaway from all of that, stay in your lane and don't drop the baton. Okay, to the women's <laughs> 100 meter. Uh, and we can throw in the 200 meter because you spent time with Audrey Leduc. You got to know her. Uh, a wonderful feature, cbcsports.ca. Check it out. Um, she sweeps the 100 and 200. What a hell of a season she has had. And she keeps it going. Again, probably not where she wanted the times to be. But Morgan, it was a wonderful scene in Quebec, a hometown crowd roaring for Audrey. They are so excited about her. I think Canadian track and field fans are excited about Audrey. But the important thing for Audrey Leduc is that here is a track meet where she was supposed to win the 100 and the 200. Uh, she had to work a little bit, especially in the 200, uh, but she did it. It's not, she's not in the situation where like the, these early season results were flukes or one-offs. Um, and she's not in a position where she can function as the underdog, but when she's the favorite, she kind of tightens up. Like she was, to the extent that there's pressure on her, in a domestic meet, the pressure, the expectation is for her to win, mm -hmm. and she's continuing to do that, which is to say she's doing her job, which is a great sign for her. What's it like for you? You've, you, you've followed this sport for so long. There's, you know, everybody's calling this a golden age of Canadian athletics. What's, what's it like for you, for us, and I'm not gonna put you on the spot because I know how you feel about predictions as far out. Um, <laughs> but, but what is it like for you, for us to sort of look across the, the board on the track and the field and actually have Canadians being really, really competitive and giving us a chance to every day of athletics at the Olympics get excited about a Canadian athlete? Yeah, we've discussed this before. Um, one, the natural uh, temptation for any Canadian sports fan is to look at what's happening in the United States and compare Canada to what's happening in the United States. I would caution against doing that only because the two countries are so profoundly different in terms of just the, the depth of the talent pool because one country has 10 times more people than the other country. But again, what Canada has right now, that Canada has tended not to have in the past is like actual breadth. So the men's four by 100 team is a contender. Uh, the women's four by 400 team uh, has yeah. been sniffing around the podium for the last few uh, global titles. And again, field events, Catsburg, Cameron Rogers. Uh, we don't always have people like across different event categories sort of hitting and staying on the world scene at the same time, but this is what Canada has right now. And then obviously the challenge is to identify and develop people uh, who can also perform at that level as this cohort ages. Well, listen, I know you love boxing, so let me use this analogy. It sounds like this country is punching above its weight, uh, and you always do that on this show, Morgan. So thank sure. you for your perspective. And... Uh, Stay tuned because we're getting close to Paris 2024 now.